just a couple of years since the first Zen launch, AMD has gone from the underdog cheap alternative to Intel to becoming the undisputed king of the desktop, at least as far as performance is concerned. Radeon is following suit, with the 5700 and 5700 XT offering much better performance than expected and for lower prices than initially announced. AMD is certainly riding a wave of success and the excitement in the PC enthusiast community is at an all-time high. And the best part is, AMD hasn't even brought out the big guns. Today I'll speculate a bit on what I believe are three upcoming products from AMD that will continue to disrupt the market, both with more CPUs and GPUs, but more importantly, with APUs. A lot of you guys told me on Twitter that YouTube didn't send out notifications for my Ryzen and Radeon review videos. So if you missed those, AMD sent me samples for their new products, so be sure to check my reviews out. I'll put links to them in the description. More importantly, please be sure to share today's video on social media as otherwise YouTube will bury my channel and only send notifications out to a few of you. In my review of the 5700 and 5700 XT, I said how surprised I was to find that the XT is actually a 4K60 card that performs in many cases on the same level as a 1080 Ti or a 2080, but that costs only $400. I was surprised to see many other reviewers out there completely missing the point on what this GPU is. It's a tiny die that doesn't consume a lot of power, is cheap, and is competing with $500 to $800 GPUs. The 5700 XT is the GPU that we've all been waiting for, an entry point to 4K that doesn't cost an absolute fortune. I wasn't as impressed with the 5700, but that's mostly because of the limitations AMD has put in place as far as overclocking goes. Fortunately, there's already a power mod available if you want to push the 5700 to XT levels of performance. At $350, getting a GPU that will get close to the 2070 Super once you mod it is just an insanely good deal. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video comparing the RDNA and Cheering architectures, and I explain why I believe RDNA is AMD's Zen moment for the GPU division. I strongly recommend you watch that video if you haven't, as it will frame some of today's analysis. If the 5700 XT is performing as well as it is, and the die is so small, imagine what AMD could do with a larger die. I've been asking around about the possibility of AMD launching the 5800 and 5800 XT this year, and universally everyone in the industry has been telling me that we will only see big Navi next year. But these are the same people that told me we would never see a 7 nanometer Vega. And last year, I posted a video where I said I believe there would be a 7 nanometer Vega for consumers. Turned out I was right, and everyone, including AIB partners, leakers, and the rumor mill, were all wrong. Hooray for me. So even though there's again a good chance that I'm wrong about this, I'm going to follow my internet instinct again and say that AMD will indeed launch a 5800 and 5800 XT before the end of the year. Why do I believe this? I've already mentioned this in that video from a couple of months ago, but here's what Lisa Su said back at E3 regarding their product stack. We want to put the best technology in every gamer's hands. Leadership at every price point. That's our commitment. Giving gamers the best everywhere. With Ryzen, you get the 3900X and 3950X, which are indeed leadership products as far as CPUs are concerned. So why would Lisa Su say they are aiming for leadership for gaming products everywhere if this didn't apply to Radeon also? More recently, in an interview with Hot Hardware, Radeon Vice President Scott Herkelman, when asked about future Radeon products, said the following, There's a lot riding on Navi. This new architecture for us is really the future of AMD's GPU space. This this is just the start of the new Radeon. We will make sure we're competitive through time, top to bottom. So here you have two members of AMD's leadership team letting us know that AMD plans to be competitive not just in the budget space, and you can expect the 5600 to drop soon, and not just with mid-range GPUs like the 5700 series, but also at higher tiers of performance. Nvidia isn't sitting still, and they will move to 7 nanometer GPUs 
eventually. So just like AMD has prepared themselves for the super refresh, I'm sure they also have new GPUs that will launch in time for the holidays in order to be competitive, as they say, in every price point. Everyone is telling me this won't be the case, and I could definitely be wrong, but it's what my gut feeling is telling me. So what will change with the 5800 XT compared to the 5700 XT? The most obvious changes would be an increase to a 384-bit memory bus compared to the 5700 XT's 256-bit bus, an increase in clocks from 1905 MHz to 2100 MHz or higher, as the 5700 XT can already hit these frequencies when you overclock it, and also an increase in compute units up to 56. For this, the die size would probably increase to at least 300 mm squared, which is still way smaller than the Vega 64 at 495 mm squared, for instance. The 5800 XT would cost around $550, with the cut down variant probably at around $479 would be my guess. Now, I know that this is a bit of a deviation from what AMD has been doing in these last few years for Radeon releases, but it seems to me that it makes a lot of sense to mirror what the CPU division is doing in terms of release cadence, and having more Navi-based SKUs would be in tune with their public statements about being competitive at every price point. To me, that indicates a $50 to $70 gap in between each GPU. With money coming in from the Ryzen sales, AMD now has the financial ability to release more GPUs. Remember, Nvidia's 500 RTX GPUs have been the ones that have been selling the most, so it makes perfect sense for AMD to have a GPU in this price segment before they release Big Navi next year, which will likely be pushing towards the $600 to $700. Why leave this big gap above the 5700 XT for Nvidia to exploit, when clearly consumers are willing to pay $500 for a GPU. From a business standpoint, it makes perfect sense for a 5800 XT to slot in there. And with the excitement in the community over the Ryzen launches, AMD would be wise to have a GPU for the gamers with deeper pockets to pair with the 3900X and the upcoming 3950X. Performance-wise, this would put the 5800 XT pretty close to a 2080 Super or even the 2080 Di, especially in game engines that are well optimized. Again, check out my video titled RDNA vs Turing to understand why this closing gap in performance will be a trend going forward. As for when exactly the 5800 XT will come out, if I'm indeed correct in predicting that it will at all, my guess would be sometime later this summer. Gamescom is at the end of August, so that might be a good time to announce it. And then in January at CES, we could be hearing about the Navi flagship, the 5900 XT. Now you might think that if this turns out to be true, then Nvidia can just move to 7 nanometer themselves and wipe the floor with AMD again. If it were that simple, Nvidia would be at 7 nanometers already. The problem with 7 nanometer, especially EUV, is that it's very expensive, about double or more of what Nvidia are paying for 16 and 12 nanometers. For Nvidia to maintain the margins that they are enjoying with the current RTX cards, they will have to wait until 7 nanometer EUV is a lot cheaper to manufacture. Nvidia's share price is tightly connected to their profit margins, so they can't just move to 7 nanometer and start charging less than what they currently charge in order to compete with AMD and still make the massive margins that they are making. It just doesn't make any sense. If you think this speculation is all a bit wild, then I'll remind you. The 5700 XT is a tiny 251 mm squared die. That's just a bit larger than the Polaris GPUs, and in some games it's edging close to the 2080 Ti already. It doesn't take a genius to see what will happen as they start producing larger dies with more compute units, higher clocks and more bandwidth. A couple of months ago, there was a rumor going around that AMD was cancelling Zen 2 based Threadripper parts. The rumor started because AMD updated their roadmaps and didn't include Threadripper in the 2019 lineup. Shortly after that, in an interview with some media at Computex, Lisa Su said the following You will see more Threadrippers from us. We love the high end desktop market. I think we'll see that both for content creators as well as workstations 
needs, Threadripper has done well, and you will see more from us with Threadripper. If mainstream is going up, then Threadripper will have to move up up, and that's what we're working on. Now, why would AMD remove Threadripper from their 2019 roadmap if they are still planning to release them? Considering the mess that the X570 motherboards were in at launch, my guess would be that the platform is the issue here, with Zen 2 based Threadrippers also needing a lot of work as far as the motherboard chipset goes. And one thing in particular stands out to me, the fact that Lisa Su said that Threadripper is going up up. The general expectation for the next Threadrippers is that they will double the number of cores compared to last gen. So basically AMD would take the Epic 2 package and fill it with desktop quality chiplets at 64 cores and 128 threads. Sure, it's an interesting product. You get a ton of PCIe lanes and support for hundreds of gigs of memory. But is that really enough to separate Threadripper from the desktop parts? Or even from the existing Threadripper products that have have recently seen massive price cuts? If you thought my 5800 speculation was wild, this one will likely make many of you laugh, but I think that there's a good chance that AMD are working on a two-socket variant for Zen 2 Threadrippers. Now you might say, 64 cores is way overkill for most people, so why even go to 128 cores with two sockets? That's crazy talk, and that's indeed true, but there are many workloads where the added throughput would be valuable. If AMD wants to continue selling Threadrippers, then they really need to differentiate them from the desktop parts. Does that mean that going to 128 cores is the answer? Well, firstly, who said that AMD has to fill the Epic package with core chiplets exclusively? There are, for instance, accelerators that you can put into that package alongside core chiplets, like video encoders, but also something that Lisa Su has hinted at. We really believe in a heterogeneous architecture. We are very actively working on machine learning accelerators integrated into our silicon, and we'll talk more about that as we get closer to the launch. I think there's a good chance that AMD is planning for the next Threadrippers to have dedicated silicon for accelerating certain types of workloads like inference, composite rendering, or video encoding, etc. Stuff that would really make a difference for professionals professionals aside from just getting more cores. Another motivation for distancing Threadripper further away from the desktop PC is so that it can be more clearly classified as a workstation. If you look at the sales from the workstation market compared to the PC, you see a segment that is actually booming as opposed to the PC market, with a sales increase of 15% year over year in 2019. This has caused many manufacturers to try and sell consumer-grade chips in cheaper workstations, like Intel Cores and even Ryzen's. Nvidia also introduced their RTX Studio laptops for this very reason. While not being workstations, they target the same professional markets with support for specialized drivers. Because the margins in the workstation segment are so attractive, every PC seller wants a piece of that pie. Think about it, if there are companies out there willing to pay tens of thousands of dollars for an Apple workstation, then AMD would be wise to offer an alternative on the high-end desktop PC market, especially one where you actually get what you pay for. Remember, the Threadrippers that sold the most were the more expensive ones, like the 2990WX at almost two grand. So going up, up could mean that AMD wants to really distance Threadripper from the desktop parts, not just in terms of core count, but also in specialized features. Does a dual socket Threadripper platform sound far-fetched? Perhaps I am wrong, but the business opportunity is there, and that would be marketing value in announcing a platform with 128 cores, even if the industry doesn't actually need it. The chiplet's design does allow for something like this to be a reality, so really the platform is the only obstacle in AMD's way. As far as an announcement date for all this, my guess would be the IFA conference in September. 
Speaking of disruptive technologies, I've talked in past videos about how APUs will eventually eliminate the need for dedicated GPUs for most gamers. It might not happen tomorrow, but it's the way things are going. In a recent internal report from a financial institution that someone shared with me, there was an interesting bit discussing APUs which said that board partners were expecting Zen 2 APUs to launch sometime towards Q4 of this year. There was no indication that these would have Navi-based graphics, but my guess is that that would indeed be the case. We've seen how much AMD can do with a 250mm squared die in the 5700 GPUs, so the Navi-based APUs will probably be really good performers at 1080p while being really energy efficient. Doesn't sound too exciting? Well, how about 1440p capable APUs? One of the things that really impressed me with the 5700 NXT is their new feature called Radeon Image Sharpening, which you can combine with scaling to produce near-native image quality while running the game at a lower resolution than your monitor supports, and therefore giving you really high frame rates. So assuming the Navi-based APUs also support this feature, you can run games at 1080p60 with high settings and use image sharpening with scaling to run even AAA titles on a 1440p monitor with minimal loss in image quality, all this on an APU. If you are in the US, you can find 1440p 32-inch monitors with high refresh rates and free sync for as low as $350. Combine that with a Navi APU for less than $200 and you've got yourself a really nice 1440p gaming system for very cheap. And remember, we're including a good quality monitor here. We might even see 6 core APUs. I'm sure many system integrators would fall in love with an APU like this. These chips would also pave the way for one of AMD's biggest pushes next year, laptops. While APUs might not be the most exciting thing for us PC enthusiasts, with this level of performance, they opened the door for some really interesting options. And if you think about it, Radeon image sharpening with scaling can have even greater implications in the low end of the market than with the more expensive builds. In an upcoming video, I'll also look at how Intel and Nvidia will react to AMD's current good fortunes, and there are some really exciting things on the horizon coming from those two companies, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Like I said earlier in the video, please be sure to share this video on social media as that really helps avoid those YouTube algorithm fails. If you've been watching my videos for a while but haven't subscribed, be sure to do so. And a big thank you to my awesome patrons for their continued support. Without it, this channel wouldn't exist. Consider joining them for just $1 per month and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. Thanks for watching and until the next one.